All right, you should be good to go. I can't hear whoever's talking right now. We're going to start off really strong with starting on mute. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Kelsey Nebone. I'm the coach for, or the event supervisor for Mystery Architecture. This is our coaches workshop to talk through uh, this event. Um, if you've been a coach for the last couple of years, this is the uh, switch off event for bridging the gap. So you'll notice some similarities, but there'll also be some differences. Uh, if you have a question uh, and you can't unmute yourself, then go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, we'll be monitoring that. Um, you can also use the raise hand um, reaction in Teams as well. Uh, and if neither of those are options, go ahead and just unmute yourself, uh, introduce yourself and ask your question. With that, we'll get started. <coughs> The first piece that I want to make sure everyone is aware of is the website for this event. So you can find this event at Mystery Architecture at the Science Olympiad. It's slash mystery. In here is the presentation we're talking through today. Uh, it's the trainings from the past, uh, frequently asked questions, um, and clarifying questions that when you ask them here will come directly to me. Uh, this is my work computer, so I can't use Google Drive, but it works. I promise we've we've verified it. Uh, so this is where you will go to get your rules, training, um, not all of everything you need for mystery architecture can be found at this website. Pointing this out again, if you have a question related to the rules, please use that FAQ. We'll get it answered really quickly. Okay, so what is mystery architecture? Students will be given a mystery set of materials to build a tower as tall as they can. This tower can uh, should be constructed to support a tennis ball at its top. This uh, these teams of one to two students will be given a random container of materials. Uh, it'll be the exact same. We encourage them. There'll be a list at the front. We encourage them to verify uh, that the materials are all there. Um, it can be literally anything. Uh, I try to stay pretty uh, consistent so that they have a good understanding uh, of, of where they're supposed to be. Uh, each team will have 20 minutes, so we'll give them a stopwatch to construct a tower that will support the tennis ball at the top. So the top of the tennis ball must be higher than any part of the structure. This is a requirement for them to be uh, a, a passing tower, if you will. Only the materials in the container may be used to construct this tower. So they're not bringing anything extra in with them uh, to build um, within their tower. They can bring tools like scissors or a ruler or pliers, um, but make sure that those tools are appropriate. Obviously, these are elementary students, so no, no knives, no leathermans, nothing like that. Uh, they can bring their own tennis ball. Um, but we will give them a test tennis ball to use during the event. Um, and we'll have an official tennis ball that we use when we test their structure. Thank you. When the students finish their tower, uh, they will come tell uh, myself, I'll be wearing a red polo, that they're ready. We will bring the measuring tool over to their tower, which is different than in bridging the gap, uh, and measure it where they built it. They, we, we will then have them put the tennis ball on the tower and measure based on um, it supporting the ball. The tower must be completely freestanding, uh, meaning that it can't be attached to or receive any stability from any surface specifically being adhered to another surface. So you can't tape it to the floor. You can't create a suspension rope to a wall. It has to be something that they could just pick up and move if necessary. Uh, and that's how I would phrase it to your students. They don't want to, most, most of what you'll see is students taping it to the floor to help hold it up, um, which isn't allowed. 
So uh, once we're measuring, the students will place a tennis ball on the top of their tower. They're given 10 seconds to place the ball. Uh, the tower must remain standing long enough to complete that final measurement. Um, as a reminder, you will not be in the room during this event. Uh, this is a, a creative, fun event for the kids to show their ability to think on their feet and to think together. Um, and so even in the room, we'll typically have some sort of block out on the windows so that they can't see its own, its own special space. All right, we will, let me see if there's anything else. Okay. So in the um, all towers that support the tennis balls rank above those that do not. So making sure that the tower supports the tennis ball is the most important part versus um, how tall can they make it. Just like with bridges, um, you wanna make sure that the bridge supports the tennis ball, not that it's necessarily the longest thing in the world. Again, a reminder of what they can bring in the room, rulers, scissors, pliers, even um, I'm okay with like paper and pencils as long as they are very much aware that they can't use those to build. Um, things that aren't allowed are things that obviously could injure them um, or other people. So we pay attention as they come in, uh, making sure that there's nothing there that we uh, would deem you know, harmful and just make sure that they don't bring anything with them that they shouldn't have. I apologize, it's a really bad picture. Um, this device you can see operated on uh, the Mystery Architect website. If you watch either one of these videos, you can see how the device has moved. Um, basically, it's a, a jig that the this slides measuring device slides up and down on, and then um, we can kind of match it to the top. We align it the top with their tower, and that'll give us the, the specific measurement. All right, a conversation about where the tennis ball can be. So the tennis ball, as a reminder, has to be the highest point of the structure. So when we're thinking about building and teaching these kids about building, uh, that's something that we really need to stress. Uh, typically, there's some sort of, I've seen historically, typically there's some sort of cup involved that a, a lot of people will use as the top of their structure. Uh, by no means is that the only way or the right way. Um, but it's a it's a tried and true method that a lot of people have used. It prevents things like this. Uh, this is the most common version of the tennis ball not being at the top. You have your structure. They've built their little nest for it, uh, but the nest is too deep, right? So the tennis ball is sitting below the top of the tower. Uh, so that's th stressing to the kids that the tower one to be in the top tier of, of scoring needs to support the ball to the ball needs to be on the top of the tower. Otherwise, that tower becomes disqualified. Can they bring their own notes with them? Uh, can you elaborate what like would be written on these notes? I, I'm not sure. They won't have any prior knowledge of what materials are going to be there or anything like that. Yeah, I was just thinking like, notes of as they're going through practices if they think of a clever way to use a certain material or something even though they don't know what they're going to get if they happen to get one of those things um i don't know that just came up in our last practice so i thought i would ask okay um you know i don't think i've ever had somebody ask that and i think that that could be applicable to other events as well um and i don't know what the ruling is on that across Science Olympiad. So let me take that question back to the director for the event and see what they say. Um, and then I'll get it posted on the website as a question there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, do they have to use all the materials? No, they only have to use what they feel is appropriate to build their tower. Um, are they using all the materials in their kit or will it only be a portion? So when you're saying kit, Jessica, are you saying the kit that Science Olympiad sells? Or the kit that they're provided that day? 
I guess I assumed that the kit that is going to be sent home or has been sent home with the kids is like with the paper, the paper clip and whatnot, mm. that all of that is going to be in, there's going to be a kit or a materials in the room for them when they get in there is the possibility of maybe only eight of those practice items going to be there for them to use. Like, should they be able to build their, um, architect their mm -hmm. structure with only a portion or should they get used to using all of them together mm -hmm. to make one structure yes good good question uh, i should add this into the training and i will uh so this is the kit that science olympiad sells uh they're going to get maybe five to seven items so when you're doing this kit uh you can see here it says it's intended to support about 10 build sessions so they could at the event end up with you know five craft sticks and two plates and five binder clips um so these numbers themselves on the the contents aren't even the number that they would get at the event uh it okay. can vary um typically they'll be when you're building these mini kits for them to practice with there'll be some sort of there'll always be some sort of adhesive something to connect to whether it be tape or labels or um i'm trying to think of something else that we would use it's probably not anything color coding labels stickers stuff like that uh they'll, they'll usually be there should be one of those honestly um that's that's going to be part of what they're built then they'll usually in my the way i build this up and so you can do the same thing when you're making your practice kits uh is i go then for something flexible so twist ties, uh, pipe cleaners, um, even like you could use like coffee, the coffee stirs and straws, uh, something in that realm that uh, you can use to create, cre maybe create a joint, but also use it as a bit of a structure. And then there's usually some sort of paper. Uh, it could be a paper bag that it comes in. It could be, which they're allowed to use. Uh, it could be just like a piece of printer paper, could be note cards, could be uh, a piece of cardstock. Um, and then usually something that I'll, I typically call it like a like a more unique item. Um, so the fact that there's like plates and cups and forks, may, maybe even call it a utensil. I don't know. <laughs> a, a kitchen item ends up in there usually at one point. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're building these kits, I'd make sure that they kind of have one of each of those okay. three types and then mix in whatever else you think that they could use there. Okay, that, thank you. Does that help? Okay. Yes, thank you. Cool. All right. This We, we kind of got through this slide, so if anyone has any other questions about uh, build items, please uh, raise your hand, ask in the chat, unmute. Does there always a paper bag it comes in, or is there a plastic bag like you receive? Uh, Jennifer, it could be either. Um, it could be a paper bag, could be a plastic bag, could be like a cellophane gift bag. It just depends on, um, honestly, what I found in the store that day and what I felt like was appropriate for the items that are in the bag. <laughs> but they can use the the bag itself. Yes, I encourage it. Uh, Jessica, I see your hand is up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so just to clarify for our practices, um, you were saying five to seven items in their bag for the competition. Now, is that five to seven unique items or five to seven total items? Five to seven unique items. Typically, uh, I'll have between three and five of each. Um, unless it's like a very small item, which increases it. So like if the if the adhesive I was looking at using was um, like the color coding circle labels, right? I'd probably give them 20 of those. I wouldn't give them just three, uh, but it'll be five to seven individual. And then each of those would have an, a quantity related to it. So they five index cards and 20, circle labels and two cups uh continued down a list of, of seven items max i have a, one more question definitely 
Um, so I know the, the first level of scoring is you, you're able to support the tennis ball. The second level of scoring is how high it is. And then the third is for like a tiebreaker, a smaller base. But yes. would the amount of time it takes them to build it ever be a factor or no? No. Okay. Nope. Uh, yeah. Encourage them to use all of their time. Um, some kids walk in, they finish in five minutes and they do really well. Uh, some sit there for, for 20 minutes and you're really encouraging them to, to wrap it up. So uh, I encourage them to use as much time as they need to, to make something effective and uh, not to worry about how much it takes as long as they're finished in time. Okay. I have one more question if that's okay. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> so this is my third year coaching, but this is my first year in this category. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that there's no like field trip or workshop. And um, I was just wondering if you had any ideas or inspiration just to bring them around something that would be fun or, you know, I like to throw in some field trips or some hands-on okay. places that we could go that you might that might help you know like oh look how these buildings are built or this museum has a small section that could be useful to learning something about buildings okay let me i have some ideas but i need to follow up on them because i haven't been there in a minute um i can post that uh jessica i'm gonna write your name down too and we can follow up thank you it's yeah. just fun for the kids to break it up. Definitely. Like, you know, you meet in the same place every day, you do the same thing. I'm like, oh, let's go on a field trip this time and go sure. see something or learn something. Definitely. Um, yeah, I think that's an awesome thing to do. I'm sure they appreciate it. I don't have an answer for that right off the top of my head, but I will definitely find one for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. That's it for my questions for now. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. All right. Anyone else while we're on this vein? Okay, we'll slide down. I have some examples that I've pulled from various places on the internet and previous competitions. So I'm gonna use these as a way to talk through uh, things that are good and things that I would not do because they will get you disqualified. All right, so first up, this is a, an event done with just straws and tape. And this, I would never do this, but this is something that they could see somewhere else. Um, or even if you're looking online, you might see something like this where they only give them a couple materials. Uh, I think that it can sometimes can put, put them too much into a box and I don't I don't want them to feel that way. So uh, overall, you can see here, uh, this is a, they, they built up a big square. They put the tennis ball on top. It was great, they did good. Um, this one is where I'm talking about like taping it to the table. This, design idea is solid um this team obviously made it work over here uh but that type of adhesive um and connecting to a, a second space isn't gonna uh, that's just against the rules um additionally uh for everyone's understanding they will be building on the floors we make these little um basically little table coves for them and they'll build inside that space. So they're, they're separated from the other teams. No one's stealing anyone else's idea or anything. Um, and the flooring is, has been carpeted in the past, so not super effective, but uh, just make sure that they know not to do that. Rillo, if the students bring a ball, can they practice placing it to test? Absolutely. Uh, they should definitely practice um, on their structure beforehand. We will give them a tennis ball, too, as well uh, to practice with in the room. So uh, definitely encourage them to test it out. Uh, so second set of examples, um, again, taping to the countertop, taping to a space, uh, but building on top. That's, that's what we want to see. We'll move on from the straw examples uh, after this slide. Um, this one, you can see there's a little bit more materials involved. Um, so you can see that there's different size straws. There's sometimes there's different like the tongue depressors, I guess is what we have here. Uh, craft sticks is probably what they're labeled in the box. Uh, there was yarn involved. So 
this team here, box is set up. It's great. The tower, it holds tennis ball on top. This one is a specific example that we noted before, putting the ball inside the structure. Uh, while acceptable in real life and in architecture, not acceptable in our um, in our mystery architecture. This also typically is not a way that they can, uh, if they were to design it like this, they couldn't place the tennis ball in 10 seconds and step away for us to remeasure. So as an additional reason not to do it this way, besides the fact that it'll put you down um, in tower world, uh, it's not going to, they're not gonna be able to do that in the time that they're allotted. Um, I'm assuming that the baby bottle was a part of this setup when they did this. <laughs> totally acceptable use. Uh, nothing is taped to the floor. Looks like they might have some chopsticks down here too. Paper bag. You can use everything you have. Um, I liked this one also because it showed a way that they used the cup support um, and use that with the, the tape across the bottom here to hold this piece up here at the top. Uh, you said they have historically built on carpet. Yes, they will still be building on carpet. I, unless the room changes and I have no idea that they're changing the floor type. Um, if we're in the same space as normal, it'll be the carpet, carpeted floor. This picture here too, I really liked because it shows uh, a new style, right? Using triangles instead of squares. Triangles we know are strong shapes. Uh, this is a really good demonstration for uh, using a strong shape in your design. Completely different materials. Um, ignore this, this is not how we would have it set up, but using cups and plates, they got some paper clips in here. Um, I know this picture's not great, I apologize. Uh, but this would be, we would measure beforehand and then we would place this tennis ball and measure again. So an example of completely different materials being used. This one I believe was skewers and cups. So they figured out how to make a, a decent enough base to support the tennis ball on top um, using the materials they were given. You can see there's some, some taping and some string involved to help support the tower on the way up. Um, but really this is a center of gravity moment more than anything, um, making sure that the ball is in the middle so the whole structure outside is supporting it and forcing that down. All right, uh, since coaches are not in the room, question was posted, uh, is there a picture taken of each team? Um, we have had a photographer come through the room pretty consistently. Uh, the harder part about this event is because of the way it's timed and the way that it exists um, and the rotation that happens throughout the day with these teams. We try to get as many teams pictures as possible, but we can't have somebody in the room for four hours who's taking photos for the whole event. So we do our best to get as many teams as possible, uh, but there's not, um, I can't guarantee it, I guess is how I would phrase that. Um, another example, this one I uh, wanted to put out is a pretty unique um, in terms of they're creating suspension, which we've said is difficult, like we don't want them to tape outside, but they're doing it internally, which is a really, um, the way that they're bracing with triangles is just a good way to do that. Uh, it shows multiple materials. We've got some clear straws, we've got some coffee stirrers, we've got tape, we've got the cup on top to hold the tennis ball. Um, I will um, it, say now, I won't give them a cup because I know this is a design that a lot of people will end up doing. I won't give them a cup that would purposely make them fail, that it would the tennis ball would sit too deep inside of it on top. Uh, so don't worry about practicing with something like that um, in your practices. Follow-up cam question to pictures is, can the students bring a camera? I. I will have to follow up and see what the official ruling is on that um, as it's. I'm trying to be fair here because I know it's fourth and fifth grade, like it's younger kids. Um, the, the likelihood of them bringing something in. That's they could use as like understanding. Um, like to give them ideas or to take pictures of a whole bunch of things like they wouldn't do that. But I don't know what the official like side of it is if we would allow that. 
I'm sure some of these kids have come in with cell phones before and I didn't even know it. So let me follow up and see what the official response is for that, Stacy. All right, I think I have maybe one or two more pictures yet. I follow up question was instead of pictures, do they get to keep what they made? Uh, we do not let them take the uh, tower out because that could show other teams what materials they get to use in the event. So the towers stay in the room. Um, I do my best to label them so they could come back and get them at the end of the day or the end of the, I guess, the first half of the day. But we typically uh, see very little or very few people come back and get them um, because it's it's just another thing on the day that's already busy and very full. Amy, the question is, did you say they will for sure get a cup? No, I was trying to say that if they got a cup, I would not give them one that would purposefully fail them. Um, so like a cup that was uh, like the really big, like red solo cups, right? If you put a tennis ball in that, um, it's going to be below the top of the tower. So I would never give them something that would intentionally encourage a failure is what I was trying to, to say that you didn't have to focus on that. All right, I think this is the last. Nope, we got two more. So this example shows using the bag that the materials came in. Um, that's, I think, just, a, again, a reminder that they can use that bag. They should use that bag. Um, I don't know if I'd have used that bag that way, but it looks like it worked for them. So I'm not going to not gonna fight it at all. It's uh, the falls on the top of the tower and the tower is there. So uh, it's good for them. Um, I will note that a lot of times kids bring like their tools in, in like a Ziploc bag or something like that. You can see they have one over here. Um, they're not allowed to use that, obviously. They can only use what is supplied to them. All right, and this is the last one. This one is just a reminder, I guess, that you can get materials and you can teach kids how to use these materials in a very like broad way, right? So this is maybe, I don't know, 20 straws. And we saw a lot of examples at the beginning where they were also using, you know, 20 straws. Um, and, and so showing them that there are different ways to combine those materials, um, using the triangles, using enough support that uh, putting the tennis ball towards the middle of the tower so the taller doesn't want to tip, all these types of little things uh, will really help your kids succeed. Um, and that's the last I have of of pictures or anything to show for your to, to you as coaches. Um, so I'm gonna I know we've covered a lot of questions as we've gone, but now we're at the I guess official Q and A. So if you have any questions, please send them over or unmute yourself or raise your hand in the chat. Hi, Kelsey. I had one question. Um, mm -hmm. In prior events that we've um, coached and gone through, they have had um, learning activities, like basically worksheets, like for vocabulary and, and different learning aspects of sure. the event. Are there any activities or learning components that we can give the kids to help them? Are you think? Okay, I do not know of any that are currently designed uh, for this for Science Olympiad. Um, it's been something I've been working on, but not something that I've completed. Uh, because this is such a, there's, hmm, let me think of how I want to phrase this. It's not a defined event. More it's not defined. It's not a test, right? Like this is a, a <laughs> thinking on your feet, creative thing. They don't need to tell me what the mass of, uh, some chemical is right um and so i i see where you're coming from like even i know when i'm talking i try really hard to stay away from too many engineering words just because mm -hmm. they don't translate well to to, to 10 year olds um right. right like so if i say something in suspension or the center of gravity like those are pretty much where i'll stick at um because they have 
like very good knowledge at this age, usually of like simple machines. It's something that's taught at this age. Um, so I've got some of those things figured out. Uh, I guess, let me just phrase it. I don't have anything right now um, to give them. I can look around and see if anything exists out in the world. Um, and we could see how that's usually posted and shared and see if there's a way that we can link that up. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? All right, uh, Nisha, question in the chat was, do they have to use all the items they are given to build the tower? Uh, no, they do not. They can use as much or as little of what's in the bag, call it a bag, as possible, or as they desire. Sorry, one last question. Absolutely. <laughs> so for practicing um, and study group, do you, do you suggest making our own mystery bag? Like one week, put in these five or seven items. Next week, put in these five or seven items so they know how different things work with other things. Definitely. That is yeah. exactly how I would approach it if I was in your shoes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess as a reminder, if you have any other questions that come up, uh, well, uh, we do have a question that came up in the comments. Uh, do you have to build the tower on the floor? Yes, they have to build in their cubby we created because we have usually six to eight teams in the room at a time. So they have to build in their low cubby space. Um, obviously, if someone needs an accommodation, we will make that. But for all able-bodied people, they need to be on the floor. Yes. Okay. Uh, if you have any other questions, definitely go to the Mystery Architecture Science Olympiad page for Macomb and submit them under that uh, Ask Questions section. Um, I will follow up with these questions that I've got today uh, in that area. So um, give us a, a couple days so that I can get all those answers um, and then maybe check back on Monday or Tuesday uh, for them to be posted. Let's go for Tuesday. Let's go to Tuesday. Um, and overall, I uh, will probably see you at one of the, the practice events and then at the event itself. So Thank you for coming. Thanks for the questions. They're very good. And I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. All right. Thank you.